Welcome back to our cellar on Budgetorama, where we will part summer heat with cool budget builds with, you guessed it, Intel Celeron CPUs. This time we're going back to Intel LGA 775 socket, motherboard BIOS CPU compatibility hell and year 2009. Straight from the Wolfdale 3M architecture comes Intel Celeron E3300, the stronger one out of two released in 2009. It comes from the second generation of dual core Celerons, and funny enough, they'll stay dual core till the end. Armed with 1MB of L2 cache, clocked at 2.5GHz, it's not much, but for less than 50 bucks, it is a whole lot to bargain. To accommodate our CPU, we went with the cheapest motherboard on the market at the time, which was Gigabyte GA G31M ES2L. It came to market all the way in 2007. Explaining a bit its ridiculously low price, which was somewhere around our CPU. While it does have some limiting factors, such as PCI Express 1.0, it has a wide variety of features. Integrated GPU that comes with G31 chipset is one of them. We will not utilize it, but it is nice to have. Its age relative to our CPU might come to bite us in the back. For memory, we'll use these two sticks of 1GB DDR2 at 667 MHz. We've never seen cheaper memory than DDR2 was back in 2009. Lower clock and capacity made them even cheaper. We could have gone with even more, but the benefits are questionable there. This pretty card over here is the NVIDIA GeForce GTS 250 from Asus. As always, the graphics card is going to be the most expensive part of this build, although there are cheaper options. This 512MB GDDR3 256-bit variant was priced around 130 bucks at launch, which was still quite accessible. But we also have an alternative, in the form of ATR Radeon HD5750 silent cell from Gigabyte. Priced the same as GTS250, this card has 1GB of GDDR5 or a 128-bit memory bus. So, half the bandwidth, double the memory, triple the excitement. This particular silently cooled unit was found at the flea market, covered in literal dirt and costing us less than half a euro. For our storage we have Seagate Barracuda 7200.12. The exact one we used as a storage extension in our 2004 midrange. This 250GB SATA hard drive is perfectly healthy at 100% in hard disk Sentinel software. Its capacity is quite enough for our budget gaming build needs. This is the complete list of relevant parts we will use in this build. Let's build this budget champion. While testing this PC for the first time, we encountered some unexpected issues. Our CPU and motherboard are both known working parts, and yet the machine would not post. 
We knew that the BIOS was updated on this board a long time ago, but there was a catch. So, we gave up and tried a different board, also from Gigabyte, GA EP31 DS3L. Unfortunately, this one also needed a BIOS update, which got us thinking, wait a minute, don't we have multiple of those G31 boards? As it turns out, we do, at least two, and one we utilized didn't have the updated BIOS. We then used the Celeron D430 just to get to BIOS, so we could upgrade it. This wouldn't have happened if we worked more on our part classification, and we'll definitely do more in that regard in the future months. Our next problem was that both of our GPUs were running hellishly hot. GTS 250 was at 40 degrees idle, reaching the high 80s when fully utilized. HD 5750 was at 50 idle, and jumping straight above 100 degrees Celsius, so repasting for both of these was in order. The new thermal paste for HD 5750 didn't prove to be sufficient, so we came up with a plan. That plan included a 12 cm fan and a bunch of zip ties. Perhaps it's not so silent anymore, but neither is our frustration too loud. Modified like this, this car didn't pass 50 degrees even when fully loaded, as much as it could be fully loaded under current bottlenecking conditions. In the end, we have a perfectly working machine, so let's set it up with Windows 7, which was released in 2009 as well. Path to the new knowledge starts with Oblivion, and so do our benchmarks. This game is perfectly playable with both cards, a bit unstable, but well, it's Oblivion. Both variants of the 2008 midrange presented here destroy both of our budget variants, but that's expected. 9600 GT is a weaker card than both GTS 250 and HD 5750, so we can check our CPU bottleneck here. Crisis is perfectly playable on our budget builds, even on the high preset. CPU bottleneck is still a factor here, but less so than it was in the previous game. HD5750 should theoretically be stronger, but it provides us with worse performance. This may be due to driver optimization with CPU bottleneck being done better on the Nvidia side. Or double the bandwidth GeForce card possess might be the culprit. Cards are not that much different in terms of raw performance. Our CPU bottleneck is painfully obvious in Mafia 2. Even though that this is the case, the game is playable at all presets. The Elder Scrolls V Skyrim turned out to be a turning point. While perfectly playable on GTS 250 on the low preset, things turn south quickly on higher ones. A logical explanation would be that memory is of the essence here and it makes so much difference. But if we compare it with 9600 GT, which also sports 512MB of VRAM, we just get new questions. We can't get every answer, can we? The game is playable, let's proceed. Great performance from both cards in 2013 Tomb Raider, which is playable on all up to the high preset. Due to driver limitations or some unknown black magic, Tomb Raider doesn't have Ultra and Ultimate presets on GeForce 200 cards. So we only have results on these presets for the Radeon card. In Wolfenstein New Order, performance is terrible, mostly unplayable. So, at 5 years old, our machine has become unable to play AAA titles. Not bad for a budget build. With an unhealthy dose of masochism, you could play it on the very low preset with HD 5750. I finished the first level of the game on it, but I can hardly be considered normal in that regard. Here are some additional games we tested on this machine. We also ran synthetic benchmarks, 3D Mark and CPU Z. But also this time we included Heavy and Tropics benchmarks from Unigine.
Our Celeron CPU did surprise us a bit. While constantly bottlenecking the rest of the system, it still provided us with an unbeatable price to performance ratio. If we weren't gunning for one of the Celerons, we'd probably go with Pentium E5400 or Core 2 Duo E7500. Wonder how that one would fit? We have one, let's find out. Performance increase in Crisis quite significant up until the very high preset. Where the game was playable, now it's running a lot smoother. Mafia 2 saw quite some gain from E7500, but it's still weird. It seems like now we hit another CPU bottleneck. In Tomb Raider, we only got a significant bump on the low preset. Otherwise, the game is running completely the same as it did with the Celeron CPU. Wolfenstein New Order is still mostly unplayable. It's funny how the E7500, which is by itself a good deal, seems like a raw one compared to the E3300. To be fair, a better chipset, memory or even a graphics card would probably lengthen the gap between the two. But with the Celeron being almost three times cheaper and allowing us to run all of the same games, it's becoming really hard to argue that these were bad idea back in the day. Both of our cards have shown good performance, and we would recommend either of them. The terrible performance of GTS 250 in Skyrim and Wolfenstein New Order is a bit weird. Could be due to memory limitations, or simply there being a problem with our unit. A cheaper alternative in 2009 would be the GeForce 9600 GT, which at the time you could get for as low as 70 euros. Other than BIOS requirements, we haven't encountered any problems with our motherboard. It's not something you would usually combine with a high-end chip, but you might as well do. It's performant and reliable, and an integrated GPU is a nice bonus. As we went further back in time, these Celeron budget builds are starting to make sense. The ill reputation that follows Celerons has mostly been earned in recent years, but before that, Celerons were a reliable option for those who want to game for cheap. This machine gave us some headaches and puzzled us greatly. In the end, we still had fun. Hope you share the sentiment. See you around.